The following is a special presentation of the National Lacrosse League. The San Diego Seals and Saskatchewan Rush meet for the third time this season. Each team has won this battle on its home turf. The last matchup, a 13-12 Seals victory back in March. And there's a goal! Jackson just full suit on the bouncer and the lead's back to two. San Diego is clinging to a half game lead over the Rush. So tonight's shootout is for first place in the West. It's the Seals and the Rush, now on PR Live. It's a massive game in the Western Division with first place on the line as the San Diego Seals host the Saskatchewan Rush at Pachanga Arena here in San Diego. Hello and welcome to our coverage on BR Live alongside Doug Locker. My name is John Schaefer and Doug, it's a big game, but really for multiple reasons here tonight. Absolutely huge for the Seals, a half a game lead over the Rush for first place in the Western Division, but also it's stick up for a cure night. Let's learn more about the Stick Up for a Cure initiative and hear directly from the San Diego Seals players. Sticking Up for a Cure is a cancer awareness night that uh, the San Diego Seals are putting together. Um, and it is um, a night where you know, we get to showcase our support for people who are suffering with uh, family members diagnosed with cancer. Stick up for a cure for me, it really hit home when I was able to connect with one of the families. Um, I met at an event a couple weeks ago, uh, the Arvizu family, and being able to hear their story and, and hear and see the courage and the strength from the children uh, really was special for me and really reiterated the fact that I mean, we're playing for, for something bigger than us and this game means a lot and to get the strength and support from, from those people is unbelievable. Each jersey on the front of it, um, the color of the, the cancer ribbon is uh, signifying the, the type of cancer and uh, the families had the opportunity to um, put their, their family name on the back of the jersey and uh, this is just, it goes beyond the game and I think this is our chance to um, allow everybody um, to be a part of the same family and, and to stick up together and to raise that awareness that it needs to uh, to one day overcome these challenges. You know, one of those special moments where we can showcase our support in their fight with cancer. Tonight, the SEALs let their voices be heard in the fight against cancer. San Diego, Saskatchewan, next on BR Live. The NLL on BR Live is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. Now let's introduce the third member of our broadcast team. Here's Tolly Anderson. Thanks, John. Here with Kyle Buchanan. What's the story behind your jersey that you're wearing tonight? Um, so it's kind of unique. Uh, my mom uh, sent me an email a few weeks back when she knew the jerseys were being auctioned. And uh, my fiance Natalie, her mother, so my mother-in-law, um, she was diagnosed with cancer 10 years ago uh, this year on her birthday in February and so my mom wanted to celebrate that uh, being cancer free in her 10th year um, so I'm wearing uh, Joanne Stacey on the back of my jersey and playing for her tonight. Special night tonight. What does it mean to stick up for your cure and bring the team and city together? Yeah, I think um, it's a pretty cool, cool event and um, I think in some way, shape or form everybody's affected by cancer and so it's the lacrosse world, the NLL and San Diego Seals doing our part to um, contribute to that and raise awareness of that so we're doing that tonight. Thank you, Kyle. All right, let's get back on floor, Doug. It's a very important game. Playoff implications on the line for both of these teams. Absolutely massive. For the Seals to get a home floor in the first round of the playoffs, they either need to win tonight or they need to rely on Calgary losing to Georgia. That game currently underway up in Calgary. 
Let's take a look at the Western Division standings, and you can see it. The Seals a half game better than the Rush, needing either a victory or a Calgary loss tonight, as you said. It's an absolutely huge game, John, because the winner of tonight gets the all-important tiebreaker as well. Let's get to our keys to the game, and Doug, we'll start with the homestanding Seals. Yeah, for the Seals, it's really all about getting off to a good start. They've been plagued recently by two dismal first-half starts. In New England and in Georgia, they found themselves down significantly at the half, had to try to claw themselves back, and in this league, that's very, very tough to do. And for Saskatchewan, they've got the best power play in the league. They need to get those guys on the floor, and to do that, they're going to have to drive to the middle of the net, try to draw some penalties, and create some opportunities for themselves. You know, another key for San Diego is what do they do without Austin Stotts? He will miss tonight's game due to injury, Doug. Absolutely huge blow for the Seals. Austin Stotts was injured a week ago in Georgia. He's been placed on the injured reserve list. Will obviously miss tonight. The future is uncertain as, as, as to whether he'll be back at some point this year. We obviously hope he will be. It's it triggered a series of transactions by the Seals. One of those transactions we're gonna see tonight, their entry draft selection, their ninth round pick, Brendan Ranford came into camp. He'll be in the lineup tonight against Saskatchewan. Dots, but playing again for a chance to clinch a home game with a victory here against Saskatchewan. There is the newcomer Ranford for the Seals. They'll count on potentially here tonight. Ranford's a great addition, I think, to the Seals club because he brings a lot of grit, a lot of energy. Been, all, been overseas in Germany playing hockey, just got back and became available. So a big break for the Seals in that regard. Frank Shiliano, Doug, has just been outstanding for this team. Nine wins already. A big reason why they're in the first place. Yeah, and he's making his 16th start for San Diego this year, and his 781 save percentage puts him sixth best in the National Lacrosse League. So again, Chiliano in net for San Diego. Those special uniforms for the Seals on stick up for a cure night. There's the head coach, of course, of the Seals, as well as we take a look at Patrick Merrill. And we are underway tonight from Pachanga Arena, San Diego. So Saskatchewan Doug starts with the ball, and they're playing their best lacrosse maybe of the season right now. They've won the last couple of games they've played. They've won their last two. The Seals have dropped their last two. Obviously a very tough weekend for the Seals last weekend. As we said in the open, I think it's going to be very important for the Seals to get off to a good start. They've dug themselves some early holes the last couple of games. There's Ben McIntosh behind the net, a save made by Shiliano. You know, the last time we saw these two teams, Doug, it was a spectacular back and forth affair, won by the Seals. A really a thriller here at Pachanga a couple of weeks ago. I think one of the most fun games we've been to yeah. all year. And it was just a high intensity for the entire 60 minutes. And I'm kind of expecting this one to be pretty much the same. So for the first time tonight, San Diego on offense, again, without Austin Stotts, the rookie phenom out at least tonight due to injury. Inside, Dawson denied, and I nice saved there by Adam Shute, starting a night for uh, tonight for the rush. And Shute's played very, very well. He's, uh, he's actually starting his fourth game for Saskatchewan, two and one over that time period. So Saskatchewan, a team that has had so much success in recent history in this league. The Seals trying to pass by them in their inaugural season in the West. Again, the season series on the line. Maybe the one seed on the line tonight is that shot from outside is saved off to the side by Shiliano. It's almost like he didn't see it there, but he got a piece of it. He definitely fought that one off. San Diego offensively, there's so many players you're going to need to count on now to step up in the absence of stops, right? Well, now you've got to, on that left side, you've got to rely on Turner Evans has to step up. Casey Jackson's been having a very good season so far. And then the newcomer, as far as San Diego fans are concerned, Connor Fields, who got his first start a week ago in, in that game in New England. Oh, nice find, and the one-timer is saved by Shute. Good passing game there set up, though, by the Seals. Now Saskatchewan as they hurry ahead again in those black uniforms tonight. A couple of minutes have gone by, no score. The last time they played a 13-12 San Diego win. And the Seals come in, come in having lost their last two games, both of those on the road last weekend across the country. That shot sails high, and the Seals have the rebound. This may create a breakaway opportunity, and it does. And the first goal belongs to San Diego. Brandon Clellan with the with the goal got behind the defense and buried it and that's so big John because the difference really in this series which has been so tight thus far is the rush have been generating goals out of their back end 
The Seals, on the other hand, had only generated one goal out of their back end, and that was Adrian Sorochetti back in game one. So to get a to get a goal in transition by one of your D guys to start the game is absolutely huge. So a great start for San Diego. As they lead one to nothing. Cleland comes at 2.30 of the first. Give Cam holding that assist. And shoot is beat for the first time tonight. So just a couple of minutes in, and the Seals have that one to nothing lead behind Cleland, who's going to go on the dot tonight against Jeremy Thompson. And Thompson has done well in this spot against Cleland this year, hasn't he? Yeah, Thompson is about 60% on Cleland so far in the in the two game series. A little bit closer on the season. You, know, you, you want to stay as close to even as you can. Otherwise, you're just giving up additional possessions, of course, to the rush. And they don't need any help offensively. It's a very talented offensive unit. And that pass is just a bit errant, but scooped up again by the rush here on the near side. It's Robert Church. Church using a screen, still possesses outside the retaining line. Church doubled. And that's going to be a shot clock violation. Good defense. Real good defense there by the Seals on that possession. Well, against a team as good as Saskatchewan, Doug, it's more than just good offense or good defense. It's really a combination of both, right? Yeah, if you're going to beat the rush on any given night, you're going to play 60 minutes of real good lacrosse. Rush winning in Colorado the last time they were on the floor. San Diego again dropping a couple of games this past weekend, including their last game against New England on the road in Connecticut. Dawson loses the handle. And the Seals get it right back. And that was a wide open player down at the opposite side of the floor. And that passes Aaron. So the Seals had a chance. Still shoot. And shoot makes the save. Casey Jackson with a pretty good look there. Seals have had some good breakaway opportunities early. Clell in the goal. There's Matthew Dinsdale on the near side. Using a screen, flipping it high, and the Seals force the turnover. Couldn't ask for a better start defensively, I don't think, if you're San Diego and Patrick Merrill. No, the boys look like they're playing with a lot of confidence, and, and I'm sure the Patrick and, and Coach Greer and Coach Sanderson are pretty happy with what they're seeing so far, but there's a heck of a lot of lacrosse left to be played. <laughs> well, there is, isn't there? Yeah, the third and final meeting in the regular season between these teams. Good find, and the shot is denied by shoot from Jackson right on the goal line. One of the things, too, with this rush team, and I was talking to uh, the coaches about it pregame, is that they're one of the few teams. They've got 13 players that have played in every single game this season. So they've been very resilient, and they've got three guys in their lineup who have only missed a game or two. So very, very stable lineup for Coach Keenan, and. And it's a veteran group to begin with, so they're used to each other. They play well together. And again, maybe playing their best lacrosse of the season right now into this one tonight in San Diego. Low to low shot is denied before he got through to Chiliano. And it looks like San Diego will force the tempo a little bit as the rush set up defensively. Here's Tor Reinhold. And he will back out of the play as we'll set up offensively here. Under 10 minutes to play in the first. The Seals have the lone goal for Brandon Clellan. Nice feed and a high shot there. Another chance now. And a short time clock here, only about eight seconds left. And again, a good find in front and a save made by Shoot. Seals doing a nice job moving the ball, finding open looks. But so far, they just haven't been able to bury a couple of those looks, but they're moving the ball well. I'd say off to a good start so far. Saskatchewan looking for that equalizer. That was an awkward shot there and an easy save from Chiliano. Both teams hoping to stay out of the penalty box because the opposition has had a ton of success on power plays in this season series this year. And it's been kind of a power, felt power play fiesta. The Seals like have been that. seven and nine, seven of nine on the power play. The rush have not, not been too bad either. They're three of four. Yeah, nine opportunities in two games for San Diego. Take advantage of that against Saskatchewan. Oh, that was a beautiful feed, but not scooped up by San Diego as we reach our first timeout on the floor. 8.41 to play. San Diego leading 1 0. This is the NLL on BR Live.
With only two games remaining in the regular season, it's time to come to our house to cheer on your team and dive in with tickets starting at just 15 bucks. The Seals' next home game is Friday, April 19th, as the Colorado Mammoth come to Pachanga Arena. Reserve your seats today at SealsLax.com. That's SealsLax.com. One nothing, San Diego leading. John Schaefer, Doug Locker just underway midway through this first period in this critical Western Division showdown with first place on the line tonight. Seals a half game better than the Rush, who wear black. The Seals on the stick up for a cure night in those white home uniforms. Shot from outside, and Shiliano did very well to hold his ground. Seals, Doug, at home have been tough to beat. Just what time this year have they been bested? Five and one at Pachanga, and if you're going to be successful in the playoffs, you want to hold your home floor. And they're doing just that. They're doing a great job at home. Hoping with a win tonight to lock up at least a first round playoff game. Dawson swings it errantly. Shot clock will expire, and this will go back to the rush. So it's been a little bit of a defensive struggle tonight between these two teams meeting for a third time already this season. Both of the goalkeepers have been really playing well. Shoot this year. We've talked about Chiliano looking for a 10th win tonight. Good defense there. Saved by the rush. Here's a chance out high, and that is deflected by Merrill, who's going to go the other way. Seals on the break. Two on one, and the shot is high as they look for their second breakaway goal. Quellen looking for his second goal on the night. Put it high on the feed from Brody Merrill. I think the Seals have had the better of the chances, and as a result, they do lead 1-0 here. Look at this, double teamed, and a high shot on Chiliano. It looked like he may have stepped in the crease. And, John, this is really a playoff game for both teams. I mean, both teams, the winner of this game really is in the driver's seat for the first place in the Western Division. And that's huge in this type of playoff format where it's single elimination. This is Jackson. Saved by San Diego. Shot clock inside 10. Shoot off that left leg, makes the save. Now listen, San Diego will need to get creative, at least tonight in the absence of Austin Stotts at the offensive end. They'll need multiple players, right, to pick up for his efficiency on offense. Absolutely, and this, this is where you hope that the leadership from some of the older guys that were acquired before the season started, your Dawson, your Billings, really step up and make a difference for the Seals on offense tonight. That pass is going to sail all the way towards that midline, and it will be an over and back. And both teams with turnovers on their last possessions. Yeah, there have been a number of turnovers. And again, we've played about 10 minutes. We've seen just one goal as Robert Church walks it over the restraining line and now gets it back. Church using that high screen. Shot from outside. That's wide. And this goes back to San Diego. So Saskatchewan, again, you know, you look at all the success they've had on offense over the last couple of years, and tonight that has not been the case early, and that's a good sign for San Diego. And the two guys for Saskatchewan that have actually killed San Diego in the first two meetings, McIntosh with eight goals, Shatler with six goals, so I'm sure the Seals are paying a little bit of extra attention to them as well. Shatler's had this remarkable season with an act for the winners and a beautiful find in front as Mitski scores. That was too easy for Saskatchewan as they tie it up at 5-13 to play in the first. Yeah, and Brett Mitski with his second goal of the year, I was going to say he's not a guy that really scores a lot of goals out of the back end for Saskatchewan, but he just kind of kind of comes down, hangs out right on the crease, Gets the feed and puts it by Shiliano. Nice heads up play by Mitski. So Mitski at 9.47 of the first with his second goal. If you're Shiliano, what can you do? I mean, you can only move side to side so quickly on those quick passes. And Saskatchewan capitalizes and scores. By the way, the Rush are on a mission to defend the Cup this season. Tickets for the Rush start at just $20 per ticket. Don't miss out of the action. Visit saskrush.com and secure your seats now. Another face-off win for the Rush, and that is a concern tonight against a team as good offensively as they are. Yeah, just give some possessions. You don't want a team like the Rush to get possession after possession, so you've got to figure out 
how you're going to stop the runs. Faceoffs is one way to do it. And now we got a whistle, and an arm is up, and a player's coming off. We're going to get a penalty on the rush. Might be Robert Church. Let's see who goes off. 448 to play in the first. We are tied in one. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the NLL on BR Live. Welcome back. Welcome back to Petronga Arena. The score is 1 1. Connor Kelly, who are you sticking up for tonight? I'm um, sticking up for Jim Gilchrist. He's the father of a great family, an awesome family, and I'm playing for him tonight. I'm working my tail off for him. Thank you. Yeah, stick up for a cure night here at Petronga Arena, raising research and dollars for cancer here in 2019 at Pachanga Arena. We're tied at one. San Diego's on the power play as Jeff Shatler's going off due to a two-minute elbow. And San Diego's power play, 49.5, sixth in the NLL versus a rush penalty kill that's about 49%, 10th in the league. But against each other, San Diego, as we said earlier, seven for nine on the power play. That was a tough angled shot there for the Seals. Seven for nine is pretty impressive against a team as good as the Rush, although the Rush have really struggled this year in their penalty kill. They're allowing about uh, goals half the time they're on the penalty kill. And it's so hard to put your finger on that because they're so, so talented defensively. Now trying to work away this power play for the Seals. Saskatchewan, a man down, less than a minute on this kill, and that got through and was off the body of Chiliano. Still a full possession here, at least for San Diego, to try to cash in. Dawson at the top of it. Again, Stotts will not be out there here tonight. This is Evans. Back for Dawson. Behind the back. At the top of it. Evans shoots low, and that sails wide and out of bounds as well. So the rush will have an opportunity to kill this penalty with about 24 seconds left on the Seals power play. The Seals had that tough angle shot, then that possession there, don't score. Again, it had been seven for nine against the Rush, and the Rush right now content to use some time because they're playing a man down for the next 10 seconds. So neither team has really gotten anything going offensively in this first period, as we've had just two combined goals. There goes San Diego now. Shatler comes out of the box, so we are even strength. Under three minutes to play in this first. This is holding. Swings it back as the Seals set up on offense with Fields. Now Dawson will back down with that size. Uses a screen and that low to low shot. Shoot gets a piece of it and then bodies to the floor and San Diego can't find it soon enough. And Shoot didn't really wow. know where the ball was. Thought he had squeezed it between his pads but it had rolled, rolled behind him. So Shute and Chiliano both starring early on. Curtis Knight gets rid of it. Double team. Nice find. And Chiliano makes Great the save. Great save by Chiliano. Back for Knight. And this is thrown away. So inside two minutes to play. That ball is live or is it? This will be San Diego on the restart. So on the restart, San Diego with the ball in this 1-1 game. Jackson. Now for Evans. And that's one thing, John, this, this rush team is so good. You stop moving your feet anywhere near the boards, and you're gonna lose the ball. they're going to double team it. You can't, you can't stand still when you're playing against the rush. No, it really doesn't have the feel of a lot of great chances so far. The Seals' best chances have come on breakaways. They scored on one of them. Final 90 seconds here of this first period. Ben McIntosh, very dangerous player with 30 goals this year. That shot from outside is off the post. New shot clock for the rush. Oh, Church gets free, and Chiliano makes another low save. Did you think the season would be this good for Chiliano when they were able to acquire him? Well, he's been the story, hasn't he? Just been a rock for the Seals so far this season. Had just one win last year with Calgary. He's had nine of them this year with San Diego. This is Fields tonight trying to go underneath. Good idea, but that pass was high. Shot clock inside 10. Okay, okay, okay. 
And they'll lose possession behind the net. So right now, the rush, they can essentially hold for one. There's about a one-second difference, and with that, I think Adam Shute comes off. Uh, Shute's looking to the bench. It looks like they're going to just bring him halfway. There he goes. There he goes. A six-on-five advantage for the final possession, potentially, of the period tied at one as the rush looked to capitalize. They did this the last time we saw him here. They scored late goals to stay in it. Here's Church against six on five, not the traditional power play. Church gets rid of it, now gets it back and shoots and hits the iron. And the Seals catch a break as that'll do it for the period. Tied at one after one. We move to the second. You're watching the NLL on BR Live. All right, San Diego and Saskatchewan tied in one. We start the second quarter here at Pachanga Arena, San Diego. John Schaefer, Doug Locker, Tully Anderson. Well, if you like defense, you've come to the right place. We've seen just two goals, Doug, thus far. Pretty, pretty, sol pretty solid game so far by both Clint teams defensively. Both teams with some pretty good chances. As you said earlier, San Diego seemed to be mustering a lot of chances in their transition game, but did have the power play opportunity. Rush, traditionally, a lot of two-man game. And they're, they're working that to perfection, but just haven't found the back of the net. One of the things, John, I was going to say, we, we said at the in the beginning of the game that we were going to take a look at, keep an eye on, close eye on that Calgary-Georgia game because it has so much meaning for San Diego specifically. Right now in the third quarter up in Calgary, the Roughnecks are leading Georgia 10-9. to That's with about three and a half minutes elapsed in the second half. So if Calgary wins that game, depending on this result, they will remain alive for a home playoff game in the first round. If San Diego wins tonight, they don't need help from Calgary to get that home playoff game. That's correct. So tied up in one into the second period. The rush had that six on five opportunity and hit the crossbar. And that's why we're tied. Saskatchewan out shooting San Diego in the first period, 12-10. And the rush win another faceoff. How have they done this far? They've won them all, right? Yeah, they've won them all. They're four for four so far. The rush will start with it here in the second with Shatler, who had the only penalty of the first period. Shatler again has had a flair for the dramatic this year, hasn't he, with those five game winners. That's an unbelievable total. And the shot is secured by Shiliano. BR Live makes watching live sports easy. Download or visit to watch all of the National Lacrosse League action and more with BR Live. Matthews did a really good job on that last possession, kind of curling to the middle of the floor and getting a good look on Shiliano. And that is behind the net and shoot. Jeff Shatler, the 2018 NLL Cup MVP, had seven goals in that series last year for the champion rush. High save. And now a whistle and a Sask player, or excuse me, a Seal player is going to go off, I believe. And then there was some pushing after the play as well, Doug. Yeah, we're definitely going to get a penalty on San Diego. I just couldn't see with these jerseys on who, who the penalty was against. Yeah, we'll wait on the PA announcer for that. San Diego, number 26, two minutes. Nine. It's Paul Dawson. Dawson with the penalty. Looks like cross check. Well, again, Saskatchewan, this is where they can hurt you. They lead the league in power play percentage near 60 at 59%. So they can really hurt you here. Three of four against the Seals. And they'll play a man up. And Chiliano makes the first save. The rush keep, though, and will get a second chance now. Seals hounding Robert Church, who gets rid of it. Church gets it back. Now up high. Worked around the perimeter. Mark Matthews. Matthews on a one-timer gets rid of it. And it was McIntosh denied there by Shiliano. Third chance, though, for Saskatchewan. Quick, easy ball movement. McIntosh shoots it wide. Or excuse me, Matthews does. And that's it over and back. The Seals doing a good job there. They've got the fifth rank penalty kill unit. They're 54.7%, so pretty good matchup here. Well, they killed off about a minute, but Saskatchewan did have about three opportunities. San Diego will try to use as much time as they can and limit the length of 
this rush power play. Still out near the restraining line. Dawson behind the back. And the Seals get another chance, but the shot clock did not reset. Dawson, a great job just to catch the ball to begin with to get the shot off. And it was like a, a pool trick shot, so to speak, for Dawson, who could not find the cage. And special teams, John, are so important because five-on-five five goals in this league are so difficult to get. That's a high shot off of a rush player, and San Diego gets it and goes quickly on the restart. Let's see if they can get something going. It's two-on-two two initially, and now they'll slow it up, maybe wisely. I think a good decision by Carl, Kyle Hartzell to pull it out. Now Buchanan will walk it up towards the restraining line and get us started here. Back to full strength. Nice job by San Diego to kill that off. Gets the best power play unit in this league. Shot from outside. The stick goes flying at the same time as the shot does. And a rush player lost his stick. That was Chris Corbeil. So both teams 0 for 1 on the power play so far tonight. I, I think a huge indicator, and you'll, you'll agree with it, if one team gets, you know, a, twice the opportunities they'll have a huge leg up obviously in this one the way they perform on power plays save and a quick outlet but without numbers and Ranford the newcomer slows it up then Ranford throws it away so Ranford active tonight guy with a massive hockey background Doug yeah he's played pretty much at every level he's played in the WHL the AHL he's played one game up with with the Dallas Stars organization and then <laughs> just came back from a little stint in Germany. I think that's an incredible story to have played in the NHL and now play in the NLL as well. Break out the other way, shot and shoot. Makes the save on Hartzell, who then gets run over. Hartzell absolutely erased after he let that shot go. <laughs> now he got a good look and shoot was able to make that high save. Man, not a lot of offense. Goals have been at a premium, and that makes them more impactful as we go along now. In this all-important West Division showdown tonight from lovely San Diego, and Chiliano does his part. Well, one thing with the, with the Seals' opportunities is that they are getting a lot of transition opportunities, but we haven't seen that a lot with the Seals. That's interesting. You That's know, a good so, point. So, yeah. I, so I like seeing the fact that they're actually pushing the tempo trying to create some goals in transition. Yeah, and it doesn't feel as if they force those transition opportunities. Like, they haven't taken poor shots in transition. They've taken some decent shots in transition. This is Billings. Swings it high, now gets it back. Shot clock winding down. He shoots, and that is wide of the net. Billings, remember, had that nine assist game. This ball still loose. Oh, San Diego, that would have been stealing a possession if they ended up with it. Billings is important for the offense again. You have no stats, but Billings, your distributor, had those nine assists the last time these two teams played. And with Austin Stotts out of the lineup again, you've got to get more production from some of the other guys that are out there. We've been getting good production all year from some of the veteran guys. We really would like to see some of the secondary scorers step up. So great opportunity tonight for Connor Fields. Great opportunity tonight for Turner Evans. Yeah, it's tough to sense each possession down how Stotts impacts you, but certainly it does. As this shot is saved by shoot, they tried to go low. There, they tried bringing Evans off the bench late to try to generate some offense. Now Sass the other way quickly towards the crease. Now angling back out towards the restraining line. Ryan Keenan, former first overall pick. There are so many former first rounders and first overall picks on this rush roster. And a furious hit in the middle of the floor. And Ben McIntosh is down. Now he's slow to get up. And that'll be a violation as it goes back to San Diego. We'll see how McIntosh is after that hit with 8.51 to play in the half. We are tied at one. San Diego and Saskatchewan, you're watching the NLL on PR Live. With only two games remaining in the regular season, it's time to come to our house to cheer on your team and dive in. With tickets starting at just 15 bucks, the Seals' next home game is Friday, April 19th, as the Colorado Mammoth comes to Pachanga Arena. Reserve your seats today at SealsLax.com. That's Seals, L-A-X. Com. We are tied at one. This is midway through the second quarter, not the first with this low score in this crucial West Division showdown. First place is on the line. Just a couple of weeks to go in the regular season. High shot. 
scooped up by San Diego. Shot clock inside 10. And Sask has it. It's Chris Corbeil. Finds a cutter towards the crease, who shoots wide there of the goalkeeper, Shiliano. Seals did a very good job getting back, sorting on yeah. defense. That looked like it was going to turn into a into a two-on-one when it first developed, and the Seals got back very, very well. Looks like an odd man rush. Seals recover. You know, you look elsewhere around the league tonight, we saw a lot of goal scoring with Calgary in the first half. 18 combined goals, not here, just two thus far. And uh, it feels like the goals are going to be magnified tonight. High shot, shoot is there, rebound. Secured by the rush, but now the ball's loose in the corner. They're going to have trouble getting this out in eight. Yeah, it's still loose. They're not going to get it out. They didn't get this out. No, it's at 11 yeah, this, seconds. This, the shot clock yeah. was at 20. So that took uh, forever now. San Diego, like you said, it's certainly a point of emphasis tonight to play with uh, some pace on the offensive side. Nice behind the back feed, and then a push in the back. And they never really got a good shot off, it didn't look like. Just a great little twister by Dan Dawson. I thought that was going to go. So Dawson, we've called his name a lot early now. Cutter in front off the crossbar. Seals have gotten lucky a couple of times now. It's at least two crossbars yes. so far this half. Balls have gotten through Shiliano, but not into the back of the net. Here's Mark Matthews, former league MVP, and he shoots wide. One and done. Do the Seals have a breakaway opportunity? No. That was Ranford ahead of the play. Now Buchanan. Buchanan underneath, cut off. Buchanan outside. Billings. And shoot is there. Billings just ran out of real estate. He got a little bit too tied up to the to the crease. No angle. Found and two rush defenders right on him. Right at that proximity to the net. Tied at one. Loose ball by the Dashers, scooped up by McIntosh, who's back in there. Remember, he took that hard high hit from Garrett McIntosh. A little brotherly love for you tonight. <laughs> no love lost. Dawson back out there for San Diego, looking to reset near the restraining line on this near side. Swung to the far side. Dawson again. This is Connor Kelly. NLL Rookie of the Year gets tied up and draws a penalty, I believe, against the rush. Just a great job by Connor Kelly to get to the middle of the floor. And when you get, go to the net, as hard as Kelly just went, you're either going to get a good shot off or you're likely going to draw a penalty. So it's going to get that power play unit on the floor on one more time. It's Two Nick Bielich that goes oh off. And, you know, we mentioned that Kelly was the Rookie of the Week last week for the NLL, and he draws that penalty, giving San Diego, like you said, the odd man rush here at 5-on-4. They're 0-for-1 tonight. Each team is. They are on the power play for the next two minutes with Dawson at the head of it. Late now in the second. Dawson unloads and shoots high, and shoot makes the save. And now Saskatchewan is 2-on-1 the other way as they hurry ahead. This is Corbeil and a save by Chiliano. Chiliano keeps it even. That was a great opportunity for the rush, despite being down a man on the penalty kill. Billings unloads, and there's the second tonight. It's Casey Jackson. Casey Jackson on a nice little underhand feed by Garrett Billings. Billings threw his guy, threw a little underhand feed to Jackson, who kind of let it go low to high. Seals now one for two on the power play. Well, Billings was so important the last time these two teams met. And there you see his ability as a distributor. And Jackson finds the back of the net. And the Seals have their second lead tonight. First goal by either team in over a quarter. 15 minutes and six seconds. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? To say it would be a, de as a defensive battle it might be, be an understatement here. I think it would. Jackson, 9.53. Billings again, the assist. And the Seals like where they stand because they lead now with under five minutes to play in the second quarter, 2-1. to one. Defense is really held up beautifully. And Chiliano, with a five-hole try, smothers it. 
And we get a timeout on the floor. It's a great one at Pachanga Arena. San Diego's leading 2-1. You're watching the NLL on PR Live. talk to your players in the timeout what did you tell them yeah I mean we're just making an adjustment there they're, they're kind of using the same similar play so we went over it hopefully we, we figured it out here boys are playing real hard they're doing a great job being physical doing the little things it's good how important is it to keep the pressure on Saskatchewan tonight yeah I mean that's that's our that's our mindset all the time is aggressive right so we're trying to be real aggressive here keep it keep being on our toes and taking the pressure to them thanks Bill no all right, so Bill Greer with Tolly. San Diego taking the lead just a moment ago on that goal from Jackson, assist from Billings on the power play. It's 2-1. And it's April, so we're doing scoreboard watching, John. We up, are. Up the uh, up in Calgary, 11-11, Calgary and Georgia after three. Now the Georgia victory clinches a first-round home playoff game for San Diego, as would a Seals victory tonight against Saskatchewan. And now a penalty against the Seals, a delay, and the goalkeeper's shoot comes off. So six on five as they hurry. And Shiliano makes that save. It's wide of the net. Ball still loose. Rush have it. And a new shot clock, too. So they're up 6-5 here in terms of men on the floor. And they're about to get a two-minute power play as well if they don't convert. And the Rush are a smart team. They know they've got a tired Seals defense out there, so they're going to take some time here. And now we get the penalty as the Seals end up with it, but this will result in two minutes now for the Rush. So penalty against San Diego, and that is Kyle Hartzell that will go off. Flash for the slash. So for the second time tonight, the rush go on the power play. We've talked about it. They're the best power play unit in the league at 59%. And as we've talked about it again, special teams, special teams, special teams are so important. Well, right now, really, it's the difference because the Seals have a special teams goal, and the rush are looking for one. And Chiliana with an impressive save on Ryan Keenan, who is at point blank range, it appears. Very good save by Shiliano, and he looks like he's, he's seeing the ball well tonight so far. He really has. And again, in a game of this magnitude, it's going to be important for 60 minutes for him to see the ball well, especially against an offense as talented as Saskatchewan's, one of the top scoring offenses in the league at well better than 12 goals per game. This is Kelly, who drew that penalty a moment ago. The shot clock is going to expire as they kill off 30 seconds on this power play yeah, and that's an okay possession they eat the full 30 get a chance to get back on defense get their penalty kill unit on the floor and uh, and get set yeah still a, a fortune of time right now for the rush as Shatler walks it towards the crease extended five on four Matthews at the head of it back for Shatler now Matthews Matthews the opposite side and the rush answer with that tough angle goal it's Ben McIntosh Ben McIntosh, the Seals killer so far this You're year right. with his with his ninth goal in the uh, two game series. Last time they met six points, including three goals. The first time they met, he had five goals and out tonight his first. And this is what happened the last time these two teams played. Every time San Diego would take a lead, Sask would answer. And it all starts with Matthews at the top of the power play, throws it down to Shatler, who gives it back to Matthews, who finds McIntosh on the crease. His 31st of the season, and by the way, for the rush, their first goal in 17 minutes and 37 seconds. Yet despite that, they're tied at two. Both teams one for two on the power play. As even as they come, although the rush are winning faceoffs tonight, that could be impactful as this game continues. Final minutes now of this first half. Tied at two. Shatler unloads, and that's high. It may have been a pass with Keenan behind the net. Still five of the shot clock. Great job defensively by the Seals to get into that passing lane. And again, they hurry ahead with Ranford. And now Billings will reset. Under two to play. High shot. That may have been off the top of the crossbar. So they do get a new shot clock out of it, Doug. And it'd be nice to see him work some time here. Now they've got the tired Saskatchewan defense. Billings takes the shot. He does, and it's still loose, but Shoot is able to recover and get his stick at it. Now Campbell. 
Rush have not led in this 2-2 game. If there's another goal in the half, it could be some momentum into the break for that team. Two teams separated by a half game this late in the season now in April. Beautiful find and a goal right in front of the crease. Is it Curtis Knight? It is. Knight strikes, rush, lead. And who's in on that goal again? McIntosh. Yeah, not a surprise. Real nice feed down to the crease to find, uh, find Curtis Knight. It kind of eluded a Seals defender for a moment. And then gives the rush the lead. And that's an important goal for the rush this late in the half. I mean, any goal is important. But right. this late in the half, you're right about the momentum. You know, now San Diego's a little bit more pressure on these faceoffs. They've got to find ways to stop the runs. Yeah, I think it's it'll be difficult to win if you're not able to win any of these faceoffs. They do get this one on the on the procedural. So let's see if they can capitalize in the final 70 seconds. Both teams have struggled on offense. And I know this, they absolutely cannot afford to go down by more than one right now in the final minute. Buchanan goes underneath. Buchanan has a lane and shoots low on shoot, and he makes the save with the left foot. Shoot anticipated that all the way. Now we're in transition back with the rush. But it's broken up by San Diego. Nice job to get out of that little pickle. Holding, if you will. holding with a real nice play to get away from Cornwall. This could be the final Seals possession of the half as Buchanan unloads for the far side. That really long shot. Skips by, shoot. And now they can hold for one, I believe. Yeah, they're going to pull Adam, shoot, go six on five. Actually, they're going to take the timeout here. Well, it's a smart timeout, right? As they take it at the end of the half, and for the second time in as many quarters, they'll have a six on five advantage for their final possession. All right, 25.9 seconds here at the end of the first half, and you're right, right at the end of the first quarter, they had another opportunity. Well, again, the rush, veteran team accomplished. They've been in these moments a lot in recent years, and now they try to, again, create some separation between themselves and the Seals. I mean, this would be not a backbreaker, but for as far as the first half goes, it would be very important uh, if the rush get another one here. That would be two goals in the final 90 seconds. Yeah, because San Diego's done a nice job defensively. Pretty yes, much have. for the whole the whole the whole first half. You want to go into the half feeling good about what you've done defensively against a, a team that's very, very talented offensively. So this could be a big boost for San Diego if they can get the stop here. And equally as big a boost for the rush if they can put one put one past Shiliano. So when you go empty, I mean you can't even start the possession or start going until what, five, six seconds, somewhere in that range. Any earlier. No, they'll they'll wait until it gets to about eight or eight, so before okay. they start. So again, 25.9 to play. The shot clock essentially off. It reads 26, so it is off. And it's 3-2 rush. They trailed 1-0 and 2-1, but they've scored the last two goals to take this one goal lead. And they'll restart it with Mark Matthews out of the timeout. Again, Matthews will be content to use some clock initially, because if the rush turned this over too quickly, the Seals have an empty net. And now the Seals putting a little bit of pressure on with Brody Merrill. Merrill just trying to disrupt things a little bit there. Here we go now inside 10. Here go the rush. Matthews down towards the goal line. Back for Matthews. Matthews behind the net and the try on Chiliano. And he is there to make the save to end the half. Great anticipation by Frank Chiliano. As they Ball went behind the net and he slid over to the pipe. Yeah, tried that wraparound shot near the buzzer. We have reached the break. Saskatchewan leading 3-2. Our halftime coverage from Pachanga is next. You're watching the NLL on BR Live. Welcome back to Pachanga Arena. Saskatchewan Rush leads 3-2. And as we mentioned, that tonight is stick up for a cure night. A few of the San Diego Seals players were able to meet with some of the families that were touched by cancer. Here's more on one of those families. Tonight on the field, the Saskatchewan Rush and San Diego Seals are playing a big game with major playoff implications. And while you root and cheer for your team at our house, the Seals stick up for a cure. On this day, we celebrate several amazing people whose lives have been affected by cancer. A visit to the San Diego Zoo Safari Park with a family recently devastated by loss from pancreatic cancer. A family joined by SEALS players Johnny Pearson and Connor Kelly. 
Nine-year-old Steven struck up a friendship with Johnny at a recent Pancreatic Cancer Action Network event. Now they have a bond that's inseparable. It's really cool because I have to, I have a friend that plays sports that I could go cheer him on. And they can create memories together with Steven's sister Cheyenne and mom Jacqueline as they mourn the recent loss of father and husband Luis. He always led by example, was always kind, always caring, very loving, definitely my soulmate. You know, having him in our life um, definitely changed ours, like for the better, like he, his sense of adventure, his kindness, um, the way that he fought like a warrior will live with us forever. And on this day it did, on a caravan to see the majestic beauty of animals, some from afar, like watching the first steps taken by a fringe-eared oryx, others up close, very close. Habari was a gentle giant, as was Bopu, a greater one-horned rhino. And while Dad, who passed away eight months ago, wasn't there to see it, all that he embodied in life was on full display. I just learned from him that everything that I think is I'm scared of, I should always have a smile on my face to actually be proud to do it. Amazing children with an amazing story to tell that we can all learn from. And now, an amazing adventure. I love seeing the smile on my brother's face. It makes me super happy. And seeing my mom happy makes me extremely happy. And it made the players happy. And it made the team stick up for a cure campaign that much more special. It's phenomenal that you guys are here and you're doing this and, and you guys are have you have your players and you guys reaching out to families like us that, you know, have really been impacted by this and, you know, trying to make a difference in our day and in our life and um, we're truly grateful. The SEALs stick up for a cure efforts began in this, our inaugural season. They won't end until the disease has been cured. We bond together, forever remembering those we've lost and celebrating those whose bravery to fight has all taught us so much. Together, we stick up for a cure. Stick up for a cure night continues here at Pechanga Arena. We'll have second half highlights after the break. Saskatchewan Rush leads 3-2. You're watching BR Live. All right, welcome back to Pachanga Arena here in San Diego. Seals and Rush, Saskatchewan leading right now by a score of 3-2. to two. And Doug, you look at those first half stats, and Saskatchewan with the advantage when it comes to shots, plus four. Yeah, I, I think that's a direct result of the 6-1 to one lead in the faceoffs. Mm -hmm. Other than that, not much going on that differentiates the teams in the stat in the stat column. Each team scoring on the power play. I was going to say, the only, the only thing that maybe is a little surprising are the turnovers mm -hmm. with the Rush with 11 as opposed to San Diego with nine. Let's get to those first half highlights. This game was tied at one when the Seals took their second lead of the night. The only goal from Casey Jackson. Casey Jackson with a real nice power play goal on the, on the assist from Garrett Billings. However, Saskatchewan would tie this game up relatively quickly. About three minutes later, Ben McIntosh has been a Seals killer. He has, and he answers on the power play on a nice feed from Mark Matthews that originally started with Jeff Shatler. 31st goal of the season, then Saskatchewan took their first lead of the game on the 10th from Curtis Knight. McIntosh again in on his second straight goal for the rush. And that's where we stand right now, 3-2 Saskatchewan. Yeah, that goal coming with just a minute and 17 to play in the first half. We're at Pachanga in in San Diego. First place is on the line, rush lead by one. We'll come back with the second half after this. You're watching the NLL on BR Live. The NLL on BR Live is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. Saskatchewan leading San Diego 3-2 at the break. And the Seals will have two more opponents next season as the league grows to 13 teams. Halifax, Nova Scotia will get a team. And just a couple of months ago, the league announced the club will play just outside New York City as well. Let's learn about these expansion efforts. On behalf of our owner, 
members and organization, I'm very proud to announce that professional indoor lacrosse is coming to Long Island. It's, it's really, it's amazing. It's amazing, you know. We've, you know, we've already started reaching out to the community and we have just got nothing but positive feedback from them, both from the fans, from coaches, you know, we're getting emails from people. I just, you know, spoke to someone here who wants to be, you know, kind of part of our organization. So corporate partners, you know, they're, what's very, very clear is that there's a real demand for, you know, lacrosse on Long Island, specifically box lacrosse in the NLL. You can't go a block on Long Island without seeing a lacrosse net where kids play in lacrosse. So it's huge. And to have that back and to have another home team, um, and the Coliseum is beautiful now. After they did the renovations, they did a wonderful job fixing it up. It's, it's a great place to go to see a game. I was just there last night with my kids at the hockey game. Um, I think it's going to be wonderful. I think it's going to be a huge hit on Long Island to have. I can't call them the Saints because I don't know what they're going to call them, but to have indoor lacrosse back is going to be huge. A big part of our strategy going forward is going to be grassroots, and that's you know box lacrosse, both with you know for the younger kids to you know college kids. You know when you know college kids are home from break or home over the summer, having box lacrosse you know programs. It has such a rich history. Um, and the timing is right. The sport is so popular now, and I think this is going to be just wonderful for for all sports fans on the island and in the area to come out and, and see what what has become a, a pretty fast-growing sport. It's 13-13 with four minutes left. All right, welcome back inside Pachanga Arena, San Diego, as we learn more about the expansion efforts of the league in 2020. This is stick up for a cure night, Doug, out here at Pachanga. R really an emotional night, I think, for some in attendance, for the players as well, and just a great initiative to raise money for those in need when it comes to cancer needs. So impressive and so impactful. And, you know, right now, both teams out on the floor with uh, signs of who they're playing for tonight, both the Rush players and the Seals players, and also people in the crowd with uh, placards of who they're supporting tonight. The very Seals, emotional night. It, it is, and the, the Seals have just been marvelous in this community. In the very short period of time that they've been in it, they've really made their mark uh, here during their inaugural season, not just with the success of the franchise on the floor when it comes to wins and losses, but where they've been in this community, the, the player outreach, the front office outreach and just their community initiatives in general. Community engagement is so important and, yeah. it, and it touches so many people. You don't even, the players don't even really know who they're impacting when they're right. out talking to kids and talking to families. A night like this just means the world to those impacted. And I think all of us have probably been impacted in, in one way or another by cancer. So it's, it's, it's a very, very special night. It's amazing. We get caught up sometimes in what the games mean, the wins and the losses, the playoff positioning. But, of course, what's most important is helping those in need. Now, on the floor tonight, Doug, a Seals victory assures them of a first-round home playoff game. They could also get there with a Georgia win over Calgary. That game right now is in the fourth quarter. What's the update? It's in the, it's in the fourth quarter, about three minutes left up in Calgary, and as scripted, 13-13. Incredible. Georgia's had a very good year. Calgary trying to defend their home floor. And right now, that game tied up. We'll keep you updated on that one. Let you know when we have a winner. Uh, tonight, there's a look at tonight's games in the NLL. As, uh, again, three other games going on tonight, including that final in Toronto with the Rock winning over the Black Wolves, 13-12. to so the Seals led for most of the half. I mean, they led 1-0. It felt like forever at 1-1. Then they led 2-1. But they gave up those two late goals. Uh, this becomes the third quarter. They've had some issues in the third quarter. This is going to be important. They've had a lot of issues in the third quarter. And, and it's going to be very, very important for them to get off to a good start again. I mean, we talked about the first half. Now it's magnified probably tenfold to make sure you get off to a good start to start the second half and put yourself in a position bringing this thing home. Seals have won just one faceoff tonight. They are one for seven against Jeremy Thompson. And in this 3-2 game, we are underway in the second half, and the Seals do win it, but now the ball's loose. Can they secure it properly? Kelly, still loose and swept up by the Seals. That's a good start to the half for Cleland as they win it for just the second time tonight. Belgrave did a nice job really battling for the loose ball there, but then, 
you know, again, a, a rush, a rush double takes the ball away from Cam Holding. Yeah, that's happened a couple of times. The two teams have combined now for over 20 turnovers in this game. As Curtis Knight scurries ahead. He's got the go-ahead goal. It came late in that first half. Third meeting between these two teams. Season series tied at one. Nice cut from Matthews, but he sailed it high and maybe wide. And that's one Matthews had won back because he was just naked. Naked one-on-one -on -one yes. with Shiliano. Sitting in front of the crease. So again, the Seals with two goals, one of them in the first quarter early, one midway through the second quarter. Play without Austin Stotts tonight as that shot sails wide. And I think without Stotts and with the defense we've seen, it's imperative to stay within a goal and avoid that multiple goal deficit. Absolutely, and, and, and essentially you've got a group learning to play with each other again without Austin Stotts there. It's gonna take a little bit of time, and I think we may be seeing some of that tonight. That was an interesting shot from Ben McIntosh. He draws a new shot clock. He just shot it high on Chiliano. It was off his face mask. Rush keep it. And that shot is wide of Chiliano. But a number of opportunities right now for the rush. And again, a shot sails wide. And again, the rush secure. This will be their fourth chance. Yeah, they're going to get a, another opportunity here with about 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah, too many chances on this possession. Up high, Church. Saved by Shiliano around the dasher boards. Collected by Shatler. And how many chances can you have one time down as Shiliano makes a really good save. The ball's loose. Seals have it. You've got a tired defense now, so I think it would yes. be well, well served for San Diego to take a little bit of time on offense, let everybody touch it, give your defense an opportunity to rest. And try to use 20 seconds or so, right? Fields, field circles. Fields finds a cutter behind the net. Wraparound try sails high. It would have beaten Shoot, but the shot didn't go. Buchanan had him because Shoot was at the other end of the uh, other end of the crease. Couldn't get over in time. Buchanan really had a had a yawning goal to shoot at. What do you think went on at half, specifically on the offensive side? I mean, two goals in 30 minutes is not going to be sufficient here if they want to win this game in the second half. You wouldn't think, right? No, I, th I think you look at it a little, little bit differently. I'm sure that they felt like they were getting some good opportunities. Fortunately, it's it's one of those very low scoring games. So neither team is exactly, you know, scoring lots of goals. So you're coming out down by one in a low scoring affair. And I think you still feel pretty good about it. Yeah, I think you do at 3-2. As uh, again, the goalkeeping Shiliano has been outstanding tonight. Here's Dawson. As Messenger collides with him, shot clock at three and that bouncer does not get anywhere near the netminder. So very similar to the pace where we started. You wonder what the winning goal total tonight will be. It might not be much more than seven or eight. That was a hit off the ball. It stays with Saskatchewan's Robert Church. Good defense there by Belgrave. Strong defensive effort here as well. And it gets through Shiliano's five hole and trickles in. A tough break for the Seals. Just a really, really tough break for the Seals. Dawson and Belgrave did very good jobs defensively. And again, the ball just kind of squir squirms by Shiliano right through the five hole. Yeah, got some of it, but not all of it. And the trajectory ends up bringing it into the back of the net. So Ryan Keenan strikes with his 17th goal of the season. And it comes at 341, the assist from Church. So now a two goal lead for the rush. They've scored each of the last three goals as well. And the last San Diego goal was at 953 of the second. So it's been 10 minutes. And they win another faceoff too. So the rush, again, far from in control, but now out in front by two for the first time. This is Curtis Knight who scored earlier late in that first half. Pass outside for McIntosh and a good save by Shiliano. Good take by McIntosh and also a, a good save by Shiliano there. So Shiliano secures the next one after letting that fourth goal through. Fields gets rid of it, now gets it back. One of the newcomers for San Diego, Counter Fields. And that's an errant pass, and that's going to be a violation against San Diego. Well, need to be much cleaner, right? And Chris brought offense. They can ill afford those careless turnovers. Yeah, you don't, you, don't, you can't afford those in a, in a tight game like this, especially when you're trying to claw your way back. And to the defending league champion with a 
home playoff game on the line. Matthews up high, McIntosh. McIntosh scores, and Saskatchewan is on a four-goal run and has taken control here in the third period. They lead 5-2. McIntosh so confident, just kind of comes across the top of the crease. It looked like pretty good defense by holding. Take a look at it here. Yeah, holding just couldn't get over there fast enough. Yeah, he just got around a defender or two and then swings it by that far side. Four goal run. The goal comes at 444 for Seals killer Ben McIntosh, as you can see. 32 goals this season. The assist for Mark Matthews, and it's 5-2. Do we have an update with Georgia and Calgary? We do. It's a final in Calgary, and the Roughnecks have won 14-13 over Georgia on a goal by Curtis Dixon. Which means the only way that San Diego clinches a home playoff game tonight is by virtue of a come-from-behind win against the Rush. Which makes the next 20 minutes or so more impactful. Dawson shoots. And shoots, secures it now. Run out with Thompson the other way. Ahead of the play. Thompson is stoned by Shiliano. Is it a momentum changer? What a hustle play by Casey Jackson to try to get back and disrupt that. And I don't know whether he got any part of Thompson's stick or not, but great hustle play by Casey Jackson. Now, can the Seals get this offense going? An offense that in 35 minutes has scored just twice, again, without their rookie leader, in Austin Stotts, Evans harassed, shot clock at five. Shot from all the way outside and a very easy save there for the netminder. And this has been symptomatic in some of the games with San Diego where they've gone on long scoring droughts and you don't want to do it against a team like Saskatchewan. San Diego trying to lock up a home playoff game. Remember also, Doug, if they lose tonight, their chances at the one seed in the West are very small. They would need a number of breaks to go their way as McIntosh has another. Ben McIntosh has killed San Diego in three games this year. McIntosh has certainly done that. Just uses his strength and his size to get underneath Drew Belgrave. And that's a real tough play for a goaltender. Your, your defender gets beat underneath. McIntosh one-on-one -on -one with Shiliano. Well, this is a complete dangerous moment right now, right, for San Diego. I mean, a 5 nothing run. The hat trick for McIntosh, and, well, the lead is four. And again, it's indoor lacrosse. You can overcome it. But it feels larger than that when you score just twice all night. Yeah, it, it just magnifies everything that you're doing, every possession, every face-off. You need to start trying to find ways to manufacture goals and, and try to get some good things to happen. Well, we've talked about this bugaboo third quarter, at least at home for San Diego. Chiliano early was absolutely outstanding in this game. And even here in the second half, I mean, you think about the one ball that got through the five hole, but outside of that, Saskatchewan, give them credit. Yeah, two, go two goals. The last one, you know, he really had no chance with McIntosh one-on-one. Exactly. -on -one, yep. And then, you know, the other one squirts through the five hole. A couple tough breaks for uh, Frank Shiliano. Another win on a face-off, though. So another one less possession for San Diego. 8.30 to play here in the third. The Rush have scored three straight to begin this period. And they've silenced Pachanga. And that time Shiliano makes that shoulder save. Long outlet ahead is overshot. He was looking, was it Hartzell? It was Hartzell. Tough, tough break, too, because you want to try to make something happen. Right. So you take the risk with the pass, but you also want the possession. That's the thing. You give it up on another turnover. And that shot is wide. Loose ball wrapped up by the rush. And Church, Church outside McIntosh slings it wide. He's got that hat trick tonight. Loose ball, and the Seals have it. It's loose, and it's still loose, so not fully secured. And then a hit behind the play. And we got a stoppage with 7.37 to play now in the third quarter. 6-2 Saskatchewan. They're on a 5-0 run. You're watching the NLL on BR Live.
Welcome back to Petronga Arena. Here with Josh Sanderson. What is the sketch one doing to shut down the offense in the second half? Uh, they're keeping us pretty uh, perimeter right now, so we got to pay more of a price and get inside and uh, create some uh, looks on top of the net. But right now, it's not very good. All right, thank you. Well, a five-nothing run for Saskatchewan. Can they end it here? And shoot once again makes the save. Pretty honest assessment by Josh Sanderson mm. analyzing his offensive group. Messenger in front. Messenger scores. Now he ends up at the crease, but the shot occurred before he was in it. And Saskatchewan is now in complete control on the road. As they look to win this season series and move into first place, it is 7-2. Nothing really fancy here. Messenger just gets the ball near the top of the crease and just goes hard to the net. Beautiful. Beautiful goal by Messenger. But nothing, nothing really fancy. Just uses his strength, his size, and his will to get that goal. So it's now 7-2, Doug. It is a 6-0 run. Messenger at 747, Mitski and Rubish the assist. By the way, want all the latest news, interviews, and more delivered straight to your inbox? Head over to NLL.com, sign up for the NLL newsletter now. You will not want to miss a beat. Well, if this thing is turned around, it's going to have to happen in a relatively quick manner. I mean, they trail by five. They've scored just twice tonight. Yeah, you've, you've got to manufacture some things. You've got to get some good possessions offensively. As Josh Sanderson said, you've got to get you've got to get to the middle of the floor, draw some penalties. As Ben McIntosh from outside converts again, he's got four of the eight rush goals and it's been one of those nights for the Seals right now. Yeah, and McIntosh with his 12th goal against San Diego, he's made a living so far this season in those three games. Well, Saskatchewan has everything going their way. It's hard to believe that we started this half. It was a one-goal game at 3-2, but they've rattled off five straight in, in lacrosse. And, Doug, you know this better than I do. It's a game of runs, but you have to halt them before they get this long. And this is seven consecutive goals for the defending league champs. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a tough hill to climb when you get down by four or five goals in this league. And, you know, the Seals have definitely dug themselves a hole, but they're, but they're capable of digging their way out of it. Again, it's just got to start with that first goal. Five goals, Doug, in four minutes and 32 seconds. An explosion for the rush. There's a cutter, but that's a... A high pass, so the Seals have it. But you're right, it starts with one goal, and there's still over 20 minutes of time, but it's going to take a goal before Saskatchewan scores another, you would think. There, there's a ton of time left. Yeah. I, I, I think the thing I'm trying to look at right now is just body language. I mean, the Rush are feeling it. You know, they got to jump in their step. Yes. You know, they're forcing the action. Seals are looking a, a little tentative offensively and defensively. Dawson, and there is an answer from Casey Jackson. Give Dawson a lot of credit. He found him, and Jackson found a top corner. Yeah, and the, but the ball moves from side to side, from one side of the floor to the other, causes the defense to shift, look around. You know, they can't double, and this is a prime example. Dawson swings the ball to the lefts, and Jackson just lets it go right away. Well, we had asked for it. Something to end the run. And there it is. Casey Jackson second tonight, 33rd this year. And you were wondering, where would they turn without Austin Stotts needing an answer? And Casey Jackson finds his second. Comes at 9.04. Dawson's 53rd assist of the year. And uh, it's still a five-goal advantage. And again, the Rush have won so many of these face-offs. As Thompson fires that, it's kept in on the rebound by Rubish. Rubish does a really good job to try to prevent the ball from going over center, yeah. create the over and back, preserve the possession for his team. Now Knight, who had that late goal in the first half to make it 3-2. That gets through, and it's in the crease, and the rush somehow end up with the shot clock winding down. Shot high, and that'll be a violation. So here are the seals. Having ended the 7 nothing run, now looking maybe for back-to-back uh, -back goals. Yeah, Seals need to go on a run of their own here. Trailing on their home floor, 8-3. They've lost just once here all year. That was to Vancouver very early. Billings had an earlier assist. Billings underneath, swings it all the way outside. Shot clock at 3. What a defensive effort by the rush. 
Now, is there going to be a rebound try? Yes, this did hit the goaltender, and the Seals end up with it, at least for the moment. They keep it. Great job to get a new possession out of that, right? Great hustle play, great heart. Come up with that loose ball. Yeah, because the defensive effort was magnificent by the rush. Now this back down try. Shot does not get through. And here come the rush on the run out. But San Diego's got a defender back. But a two-on-one develops, and that's an errant pass. Looking for Mark Matthews. Seals looking to run a little bit. Yeah, again, trailing tonight. They've had troubles on offense. You know, they led it again for most of the first half. Led 2-1, gave up two late goals. Now trail 8-3 as Saskatchewan has dominated this third period. Dawson on the far side, backing down the defender. Using his physicality, spinning, getting underneath, diving, try is no good as he gets back up in the rush half possession with 3.47 to play and a timeout on the floor. Saskatchewan leads by a score of 8-3. to three. You're watching the NLL on BR Live. Seals show his support in the battle against childhood cancer every game. Goalie Tyler Carlson explains the special logo he wears on his helmet. The sticker I have on my helmet uh, is the uh, pediatric cancer helmet that was part of the game last year. Uh, TNGWN stands for uh, Team Naomi Get Well Now. And it's an incredible cause and I just haven't taken it off because it's such a great cause. And, uh, I mean, it hits home really, really hard because, uh, I mean, I've got two kids at home, two little ones at home, and uh, so for me to show a little bit of support, that's, uh, that's what I can do. Really great cause tonight to stick up for a cure game for the Seals out here at Pachanga. Saskatchewan in this critical game on the floor, leading 8-3 right now. Seals need a goal and get one. They've scored two straight. Connor Kelly, your reigning rookie of the week. Connor Kelly. Picking up where he left off last week. Nice little cut across the top. Actually shot the ball from the wrong side. If Connor Kelly has a wrong side, ends up <laughs> on the left side, shoots it right-handed over, shoots shoulder. Well, you said it. There's a lot of time left in this game. It was seven straight by Saskatchewan, but all of a sudden San Diego believes. It's a game of belief, and they're within four. It's a little bit of energy, you know. You get a little, yeah, you get a, a you get a couple goals, and you get that juice going, and maybe that's what hap what's happening to the Seals here. Kelly, just 23 years of age, coming to life here the last couple of weeks for the Seals, who again lose a faceoff. So, you know, the possessions are shortening. The opportunities are when Saskatchewan gets these extra chances. Late in the third. It was a 3-2 game at the break. High shot, and how about Ben McIntosh? Are you kidding? Ben McIntosh with just a laser. Far side, top corner. Chiliano may have been screened on this because he didn't move he didn't at move, all. Yeah. Here's another look. Outside shot. Yeah, he, I think he was. Yeah, he had to be screened there. Yeah, he clearly was. He clearly was. Soriketti was in his uh, you know, vision, in his lane to see that shot. McIntosh, five goals, two assists. We're in the third quarter. Another massive game against the Seals for two teams. And who knows, Doug, they might meet again, right, in the postseason for a fourth time. Absolutely a chance. Merrill on the far side. Seals with their mini two-goal run ending on that goal by the rush. We've had a big third that scored six times. Shoot makes the high save. New shot clock if the Seals can keep it, and they do. Good work by Casey Jackson to come up with that loose ball. Got to get going now on offense. Dawson, the veteran, gets rid of it with that scoop pass. Now the ball is loose, and is still loose the rush Avenue. Rush with numbers as they hurry ahead, and they lead 10-4 on their seventh goal of the period. This one from Mark Matthews. Matthews just streaking off the bench, uncovered.
They had done all that work, Doug. It felt to get those two consecutive goals and pulled it within four. And now the rush in the blink of an eye. Have that 10-4 advantage. What a period. Seven goals. Yeah, and, and again, it, it, Matthews is so talented. You get him streaking off the bench right. with a head of steam. No defender in front of him. He's going to bury that nine times out of ten. It, it feels like Saskatchewan has had more room here in this third quarter to operate on offense, and they've taken advantage of that. They lead 10-4. They've matched their largest lead tonight. Still over a quarter to play, but it's an uphill battle, no question about it right now for San Diego against a team as uh, good as the Rush. And again, they've won their last two games. Saskatchewan wins tonight. That's a three-game winning streak in first place in the West. That low to high shot is smothered by shoot. And Rubish comes away. The Seals trying to generate offense any way they can. The, the shift before last, they had Merrill out there. He took an extended run on, on the offensive end, trying to make some space. Clellan was up there that time. He's the one that took the shot on offense. So they're, they're trying to manufacture some things. See if they can manufacture or create here late in the third. Again, 10-4. It was 3-2 at the break. Didn't look as if any team would get to double digits tonight, but Saskatchewan with a flurry here. Now leads by six. That shot's wide. Saved, though, by Billings. Loose ball secured by Matthew Dinsdale. And now the difference is, uh, well, they're going to be able to hold this for a final shot. And this will be the third time in three quarters they can go six on five here, Doug. That's amazing. And it looks like they're going to keep shoot on the floor with this large lead. Yeah, you know what, the difference is a couple of seconds, so they will keep him out there. Nice pass in front. And from the floor, the shot's going to be waved off because of a crease violation. It was Robert Church. How did he even get that off from his backside? Now final seconds, but before that, San Diego will use the timeout. And they'll reset this clock probably to around four seconds, I would think. Well, you, you need to take advantage of every possession you get, I would think, and that's why they use the timeout here. Trailing 10-4, they can go six on five for those four or five seconds that they'll get. And maybe get something late here in the third. And a seven-goal period for Saskatchewan. And they're about 15 minutes away from first place. Let's take another look at this really phenomenal effort by Robert Church in front, Doug. Yeah, Knight feeds it inside. It was it, it was really good defense by Brody Merrill. Church just comes down with the feet. Great hands. And then lets it go while he's on the ground. But clearly as he shoot as he shoots the ball, he rolls into the crease. And clearly on top of the crease so, there. And and the clock was showing 6.6. .6. Oh, that's interesting. But they've got it reset to four. Well, at four, you don't have <laughs> much of a chance, but a quick pass and shot, potentially. Four seconds, here we go, six on five, Seals trailing, and here is, well, they're not gonna get a shot off. Uh, really need, it really needed to happen with the first pass down to Jackson. 10-4, and, and, and he didn't feel good about it, sorry about that. You're watching the LL on BR Live. The chase for the championship has begun, and only one team can be crowned champion. Be sure to catch all the action live as the playoff race heats up. Round one of the NLL playoffs begins May 3rd through the 5th on BR Live. There's a good look at the Rush 2018 champions in the NLL. And right now they lead in San Diego, Doug, 10-4 after three. So you want to know how impressive Ben McIntosh has been against the Seals this year? <laughs> yeah, please tell me. 13 goals, 9 assists, 22 points. So that's over 7 points a game in the three meetings. That's and, incredible. And there's still 15 minutes to go. It is incredible. And despite that, San Diego, remember, won one of these games. They won the last one here, 13-12, in a really hotly contested affair. Face-off game has been an issue for San Diego tonight. They've won just 5 out of 17. And here, who's going to get to scoop it up? It is the rush. So... 13 of 18 have gone to the rush. And that loose ball was not picked up by San Diego. Looked like they could for a moment. Quickly ahead. A seven-goal third 
has the rush comfortably in hand. Again, the winner, Doug, is in first place. Yeah, it's a massive game, and it's a tiebreaker, and there's another rush goal. From Matthews outside on Chiliano, eight of their 11 have come in the second half, and right now they've got their largest lead. McIntosh taking on Dawson, lets it go left-handed. On the right side of the floor, really nothing fancy again, yeah. but... You know, I'm, su I'm surprised that uh, Coach Merrill hasn't made a goalie switch here just for a minute. Sometimes give, is a... Yeah, to give, to give Shiliano a, a break. It's... He's, he's clearly struggling, clearly not seeing the ball well right now. And Look at Tyler Carlson, the backup goalkeeper. We just heard his story on the stick up for a cure night a moment ago with Tolly. So 11-4 right now. And another turnover against San Diego. A lot of turnovers in this game both ways. Messenger hurries ahead, finds a cutter. That's Cordwell, and he shoots it high. They were trying to take advantage of the fact that, that Garrett Billings was caught back on defense. There they go quickly. And now reset. Join Devin Candy and Renee Washington this week, taking you inside the action on Inside the NLL every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on BR Live. From outside, Billings has that scooped up by Shude, who's really been outstanding tonight. He's been victimized just four times. Scott Campbell. And I think if you're the rush, dog, and tell me if I'm wrong, I think you're content to use 20 seconds or more every time down with a seven-goal lead. Yeah, certainly the clock is their friend as we work towards the, the middle part of the, the fourth quarter. But I don't think they know really any other gear. Mm -hmm. This is Shatler. McIntosh has been the story. Yeah, that's not Shiliano. Yeah, nice he's nice there. save by yeah. Frankie there. Still about 13 minutes to play. This is Garrett McIntosh ahead. And now Dawson back out there. The veteran trying to will San Diego back into a game. It would be a remarkable furious comeback late. Nice underneath move by Kelly who's come to life here in the second half. Just a great great move by Connor Kelly. Turned on the Jets and went to the net. Hey, Connor Kelly he's playing some good lacrosse isn't he? Yeah that was a that was a great little play. Just kind of takes the ball yeah, gets a good a gets a good seal by Dawson goes underneath and buries it. Very heads up play by the rookie. It was after getting that help from Dawson. Yeah, nifty finish underneath on shoot. So number five for San Diego. And, you know, it's interesting because based on the first half, you'd say five goals into the fourth quarter, you'd be in good shape. But the rush went on that run offensively and now have the large lead. And again, you got to, if you're San Diego, you got to keep trying to pack away at this thing, yes. right? Yes. You don't know where it's going to end, and lacrosse is a funny game. You just got to keep working hard. Keep trying to peck away, and I'm sure that, that was, that's what Patrick Merrill and his staff are looking for to see who responds in these kinds of situations. And these are important. They win a faceoff after scoring the goal. And now we get a fight in the middle of the floor. A fight is broken out here at Pachanga very briefly between these two heated sides. Who was it between? It was between uh, Brandon Clellan and Thompson. Thompson really didn't want any part of it. And why would he? They're up. Yeah. You know, they're up by six goals here. Things will get heated in this sport, obviously. It's very physical. This is the third meeting between these two sides, and those guys have been going at it all night on the dot. We'll get another look at it. Thompson goes off. Clellan goes off. How did this start? Yeah, I mean, there it is. Near right the at the, right the, top, at the top of the screen. Of the screen. And they really weren't able to go at it very long before the officials got in there and the helmets were on. Yeah, it looked like a lot of words and then uh, a little bit of pushing and shoving. Two minutes, dead ball foul. San Diego, number 63, two minutes sloshing, two minutes, dead ball foul. Five on five. Okay, so they offset. They'll play five on five. No, kind of no harm, no foul. I mean, there was uh, you know, some pushing and shoving and even maybe some punching, but... We'll play on with 12.34 to play five on five. Well, the interesting thing here, John, is if San Diego can get a goal, now your nemesis at the face-off X is not in the game. 
Yeah, it's a really good point. So probably a pretty good trade-off for for San Diego. Yeah, maybe to win and another face-off Yeah, or two. Based, based on how things are going tonight. Quick one-timer is well wide. San Diego scoops it up. That pinball's through, and it's collected by the Seals. Outside shot. Got through shoot, but it was wide at the net. Now the rush, again, slowing things up. First time they met, a victory at Saskatchewan for the rush. Last time they met, Seals held on for a 13-12 thriller here just a couple of weeks ago. And right now, the rush lead and are about to go on the power play. Delayed penalty. They'll play six on five until the Seals secure it. That pass behind the net and the wraparound shot. Did it go in or not? No, it didn't. Another really nice effort by Frank Shiliano to get go from pipe to pipe to cut that off. Nice save by Shiliano. That would have been McIntosh's sixth. So a seal goes off here, and Saskatchewan goes Andy on the power play. Where they're one for two tonight. It's Adrian Sorichetti with a slash with 11.37 to play. Here's another look at... I thought... I thought that may have been in the net. So did, Derek, you know, so did Derek Keenan, because he just yeah. threw the challenge flag. You know, when I saw it live, I thought it was as well. Now, I know the net came off its bearings, but I thought the ball was in the net regardless. And, now, and, and, the, way, and the way this works is if the, if the net is off its moorings and the ball crossed the original plane, it's still a goal. It doesn't matter where the net is. So the officials are going to have to look at that. All right, so we will look at it, and here is the vantage point. Well, from that angle, it's tough to see, I believe. I think from that angle, John, it looks like it stays out. Yeah, from there, I agree with you, and we'll see what the other angles would provide for the crew. Saskatchewan playing their best lacrosse of the season at the right time here in April. Trying to maybe lock up the one seed. Now, they're not locking up a one seed tonight, but they sure have the inside track to it with a victory. In fact, if they win tonight, the Seals would need to win out. The Rush would need to lose out for the Seals to wrap up the one seed in the West. Absolutely. It makes it the, the loser of this game. It, it, it makes it very tough for them to secure first overall. It, it would take something that is unlikely to occur, could occur, but is unlikely to occur. And uh, what's important here is that the lead is already six. And... You know, if they punch another one across here on review. Well, Der Derek Keenan is one of the smartest coaches in go. our league. Yeah, it's it's very tough to see if that ball yeah. was in. I agree with you. I think Der that was kept out. Derek Keenan is one of the smartest coaches in the NLL. The fact that he's challenging a goal at this state of the game, 11-5, he, he, know, he knows how quickly things can change. No question about Every it. Every goal is huge. No question about it. So still 11.37 to play. I mean, first of all, Keenan has had all the success, right? As a you know, player, coach, GM, 13 NLL Finals appearances. He's been a part of nine championship teams. So they continue to explore this challenge. Yeah, either way, they're in good shape. They either get the two-minute power play or they lose by seven. It's, it's, a trick, it's a tricky call, too, because the net did come off its moorings. Right. Well, we're going to get the official ruling right now. Exactly sure Due to inconclusive evidence, the call on the field stands. We got no goal. No goal. Uh, which, again, I think if you're the rush, by the way, is not the worst thing in the world. And I'll tell you why. They don't get the goal, but they essentially can hold the ball maybe for two minutes. They'll be on a power play with 11.37 to play. Right, and, and, the, and the call on the uh, floor was inconclusive. Okay. Which is, I think, what you thought as well. Tough to tell. 
So again, they're on the power play five on four. A couple of seals are in the box right now. Sorketti and Clellan, who went off for that fighting penalty for four minutes. Quick pass up high, and that does not get through. So now on the uh, kill here, you're going to have to try to get something going on offense because you're trailing by six. Yeah, you pretty much you pretty much want to try to generate some offense every possession you've got. Try to claw your way back into it. Here's Connor Kelly. He's had a nice little night, especially here in the second half with a couple of goals. Kelly dumps it for Dawson, who's in the middle of the floor and doubled. He tries to curl around it and through it, still has it, and loses it. And this will be a violation as the rush get it back. Don't miss the NLL's newest show, NLL Flash, hosted by Tyson Geck, taking a closer look at the NLL's hottest topics and takes from an all-star cast of analysts across North America every Wednesday at 4 Pacific time on NLL.com. So about a minute left in this power play for the rush. Yep, with that extra man advantage. Nice pass, and Chiliano's able to get there in time. Good save by Chiliano. Going side to side on Ryan Keenan. Matthews at the head of this. New shot clock, by the way, for the rush. Keenan again shoots that off the crossbar. It will stay with the rush, so they're getting second chances and third chances on the power play. As they look to add to the six-goal lead, seven goals in the third have been the difference. Low shot on Chiliano, and again another opportunity for the rush. Another good save by Chiliano, however. Final 20 seconds of the power play. They're trying to score on it. And as it ping-pongs through, it's still loose. And holding, holding couldn't pick it up initially. But yeah, and they're going to... Holding couldn't pick it up initially because he was the first guy through the crease. He would have been the first guy to touch. 9.47 to play in the fourth. Saskatchewan leading 11-5. This is the NLL on BR Live. With only two games remaining in the regular season, it's time to come to our house to cheer on your team and dive in with tickets starting at just 15 bucks. The Seals' next home game is Friday, April 19th, as the Colorado Mammoth comes to Pachanga Arena. Reserve your seats today at SealsLax.com. That's SealsLAX.com. John Schaefer, Doug Locker. It is a six-goal edge for the rush. They led by one at the break. Shoot makes a very high save there as the Seals keep it. Billings circling. Seals need goals in a hurry. Nearing the midway mark of this fourth quarter. And they've done this before, Doug, as they lose the handle. Remember the Philadelphia game? I think, what, six goals in the final four or five minutes to come back and shock the wings here in San Diego? Yeah, it can be, it can be done, yes. obviously. You've yep. got to move the ball and create opportunities, though, to make it happen. Okay, no Austin Stotts tonight. See if they get him back or not moving forward. That shot is off the side of Chiliano and an easy rebound leading to a run out right now for San Diego. Brody Merrill at the head of it. Three on two as they hurry and Merrill denied by shoot. And Merrill gets pushed from back, behind, right? yeah. So it'll stay with San Diego. So break there. Merrill goes off. Seals lowest scoring output this season, Doug. Also five goals, right? Five goals back on December 28th and a 9-5 loss at Calgary. That was forever ago as that shot from Kelly underneath is off the mark. I like that take by Kelly. Yeah, he's been outstanding in the second half. He's really been the offense in the second half for San Diego. And then, John, the second lowest output for the Seals was on February 8th here at Pechanga against Vancouver. How many that night? In a 14-6 loss. So in a similar boat right now, but there are still eight minutes to play. Shatler swings it, and another goal, a beauty of a goal. Is that McIntosh? That would be Mr. McIntosh. Number six. So the sock trick for Ben Mack. So update his totals against the Seals. He's averaging, again, better than seven points per game. He's pushing eight points per game against San Diego. And that one solved Shiliano, who's coming out. Tyler Carlson's coming in. Six goals, two assists for McIntosh, and that'll do it for Shiliano, at least for the time being, who's been brilliant this year for San Diego. But tonight has not been the night. Yeah, and it's been a tough night, and, and not all on Shiliano, to tell Absolutely. you the truth. Yep. 
So Carlson is in the 30-year-old who last year played, of course, for the rush. Had some limited action with them. And the lead again matching the largest of the night for the rush. And it would take something very special at this point. Seven goals in seven minutes for a chance to get even. And that's holding the rush off the scoreboard as well. See if they can do it. There's a one-timer. And a thing of beauty for San Diego. Turner Evans from Garrett Billings. It's 12-6. Beautiful look from Garrett Billings to find Turner Evans. Great vision. Little Beautiful. face dodge. Finds, finds Evans just slipping down the backside. Oh, they made it look so easy. Doug, why don't they do it every time? <laughs> if only the sport was so simple. Uh, I'll tell you, Billings, is, if there's a better creator, I'd like to see him. I just yeah, gorgeous. And, and, we're, and really, right there, you saw it. Billings kind of draws a triple team. Yes. And has the presence of mind to move it to the to the open guy. If you're going to score against the rush, you got to move the ball. Well, they win this faceoff, and if they're going to get back into this game, they need to win all those things, and they need some quick ones. As Shoot is able to deny Casey Jackson, who's coming on there off the bench. And now again, I think if you're the rush, at this point, with seven minutes to play and a six-goal lead, they're going to work on the clock. Carlson in net. See how he fares for the Seals here in uh, some extended extended action right now. And he is beat as the rush extend their lead to now 13 to six. Dinsdale with the strike. Marty Dinsdale with a nifty little finish inside. Take a look at it here. Keenan to Din Dinsdale and he just kind of beats Soraketti Again, underneath, dives, to, dives for the goal. I'll tell you, 10 goals in the second half for the rush on the road against San Diego, as good as they've been here at 5-1. and one, That's a half. 14th goal for Dinsdale, comes at 8.06, give an assist as well to Ryan Keenan. Under seven minutes to play. And what this means, Doug, as we kind of look ahead, is that the rush are going to, in all likelihood, control their own destiny or be on their home floor on their way through the Western Division playoffs. Yeah, it's very big because they control the tiebreaker now. There's a two-on-one. And it's missed. That shot was wide. Seal should get it back here. Off the boards, secured by Buchanan. We know that San Diego next week has Colorado here. They'll finish at home against Buffalo the week after. But the Rush will still have three games to play. So if the Rush win one of their three, or if the Seals drop one of their two remaining, will the Rush lock up the top seed in the West? Yeah, and the, the Rush go home tomorrow and play, play the Philadelphia Wings in Saskatchewan. So a win tonight followed by a win against Philadelphia tomorrow, they'd be the one seed. Correct. The, the other the other score that happened tonight is uh, Colorado lost. So that keeps Vancouver's hopes alive moving into their game with Philadelphia on Sunday. So it starts to get a little crowded. Colorado with six wins, Vancouver with four wins. You could have a situation tonight after tonight where San Diego, Saskatchewan and Calgary all have nine wins. And of course, only two of those teams will end up with a home playoff game in the first round. San Diego hoping for one, and there's an answer. Connor Kelly with his third of the half. Good passing here in the second half. And Connor, Connor Kelly's kind of turned into the fourth quarter guy. You know, last week in New England, yeah. I think he had all four of his goals in the fourth quarter when the, when the Seals were trying to mount that comeback. Tonight, he's doing a lot of damage in the fourth. Again, just sitting on the far side of the, the crease. You know, it's funny you mentioned that New England game. It's not that they're similar games, but they ended up in similar spots. Like, the New England game was a lot of first-half action. I mean, they, they built this massive lead that the Seals really couldn't rebound from. Tonight wasn't the same story. It was a struggle for the first 30 minutes, but the Rush have done this in the second half. And Kelly scored that one on a nice little shovel feed from Connor Fields. So Kelly, yeah, from Fields, Billings an assist, too. And another quick goal, this one from Buchanan. Looked so like hold. it deflected. It was deflected, hold everything. It's 13-8 with 5-12 to play. And here come the Seals showing some life in the fourth. 
Ah, uh, the veteran Buchanan. Just using his speed to go right to the net. Getting away from kind of that perimeter thing that Coach Sanderson talked about when he talked to Tolly. Nice placement, top corner. How about that? Two goals in 12 seconds for San Diego. This comes at 9.48 from Buchanan. And if nothing else, even if they do not come back and store back with a miracle comeback, they're showing a lot of life here late. Absolutely. Which is a really positive sign, especially into next weekend, which will be important regardless of result. Under five to go. And again, the rush knows that they've got the advantage, so they hold the, hold the ball as they move forward here with Matthews. Seven to shoot, and that's off the post and a break for Carlson, but the rush could use another 30 seconds inside of five minutes. But first, should have had a time on the floor. We will not get it. Under five to play. Matthews using a screen. Matthews again. Nice pass in front, and Carlson is beat once again by Dinsdale. And that may be the icing for the rush to close the door on San Diego. It's 14-8. Nice ball cut by Dinsdale. Schaller finds him cutting right across the top of the crease. One-on-one -on -one with Tyler Carlson. And John, next weekend's really going to determine a lot in the Western Division. You've got Colorado coming here to San Diego. And you've got Saskatchewan playing in Calgary. Vancouver is also playing at Rochester. So everybody in action next week, and they're all pretty major games. Dinsdale at 10.32. McIntosh and Chandler the assist. 14-8 Saskatchewan. 11 of these goals have come in the second half. And the defending champs flexing their muscles here tonight in San Diego. Chandler. And there's Carlson getting his body on it. Quick outlet in a six-goal game. Might be hard to find enough possessions here inside four minutes. Yeah, the, the Seals are going to need to go fast if they want to yeah. try to crawl back into this yeah. one. Score, win a face-off. Score, win a face-off. That's the uh, solution to this problem right now. Easier said than done in all likelihood. Dawson gets underneath. Dawson's getting held, and Dawson shoots it just high of shoot. Been pretty solid tonight in net. Ball still loose. Seals got another chance at it here with a new shot clock. You love the scrappiness from Dawson. Look at that physicality. Boarding off, spinning. Outside. Shot is high. Another shot. Seals did a nice job here on offense. <laughs> Jackson with two. Jackson with two good looks at the net right there. Dawson triple team. Look at this. Dawson with the individual effort. Dawson still has it. And he's working hard. He's doing a lot of work right now. This is awesome to watch. Getting some help. Getting free. Now passing it off. Shot clock at seven. And then that quick shot on shoot does not draw or find it out. Under three minutes to play. Saskatchewan. Is going to move to nine and six and drop the seals to nine and seven and move into sole possession of first place with two weekends to play in this league in the regular season. Underneath, yeah, Carlson is able to make the save there on Matthews. Big save by Kyler, Tyler Carlson. One on one with Matthews. Now they're gonna have to figure out how to play without Stotts if he doesn't return, Doug, moving forward. And uh, you know, again, this is not their lowest scoring output of the season. In fact, it won't be close with eight goals. But not their best offensive night by any stretch. Just two goals in the first half. A lot of work here by Billings outside. Billings still has it. Billings stripped from behind and held it, looked like, and a penalty will be coming up against the rush. Yeah, Evan, Evan's got wrapped up there. Timeout on the floor. 151 to play. Saskatchewan leading 14-8. This is the NLL on BR Live. And now for the play of the game presented by Geico. Guess who? Ben McIntosh. This finished off a seven-goal run for the rush. 
from outside, made it 8-2. What a night, and what a season for McIntosh against the Seals. They'll be seeing him in their nightmare, San Diego. Yeah, I'm sure if they didn't see Ben McIntosh again the rest of this year, they'd be just fine with that. They'd be okay with it if they could get through the West without playing Saskatchewan. Seals out of power play. New shot clock. Under two minutes to play. All rush right now. They lead by six. And that'll trickle back towards the bench. Now, not going to overcome six goals in the final 90 seconds, but it's always nice to take momentum with you to the next game. Shoot's been really solid in net. This ball is loose and stolen by San Diego. Billings will see if he can start something. Seals back home next weekend. Nice passing. Great save by Shoot. That was on Buchanan. Yeah, Buchanan hit the pipe on that one. Dawson off the pipe. Inside of a minute to play. And they stop the clock at about 48 seconds to play. What do you got here as the official comes over? Well, it's under it's under two minutes, so they're going to take a look at it, make sure the ball didn't per didn't didn't break the plane. That's interesting. I mean, yeah, it was it was a uh, from up here. It was difficult to see that. It looked like the ball was kept out. Let's we'll see if we can get another look. Fourteen, eight, eleven second half goals for the rush. As, uh, here's another look, Doug. I don't think that. Yeah, ball I don't went think in. that one in. <laughs> right, right at the, right at the junction. But it came out pretty clean, so they're just being careful. Better safe than sorry, right? Here's uh, the overhead look. No, this is at the other end. Well, you know, you never know how these things are going to turn out. And tonight without Austin Stott, no it was a defensive struggle. But when the rush got going on offense, the Seals just didn't have an answer. And when they finally got an answer, it was too late. So no goal. We'll restart here with 48 seconds to play. Seals, though, on the power play, looking for a late goal. Billings. Tough pass there for Dawson to handle. Ball just kind of died on the end boards. Shot from Billings, saved by Shoot. And uh, the rush can win it with this possession, essentially. Is that slung? Where on earth did that go <laughs> from Shoot? Just came out of his uh, came out of his stick funny. Yeah, like a fastball that ends up over the netting in a baseball game. Final 25 seconds. I don't think it was intended by Shoot. And they get the last goal of the night. It will not be the winner, though, in a 14-8 game. Final seconds. Behind the net. Cutter. Wide of shoot. Still a second, and that'll do it as Saskatchewan wins the season series and takes two of three from San Diego and moves into sole possession of first place in the West impressively with a 14-8 win here. Very big, very big win for Saskatchewan. Clinches the, the tiebreaker in the season series. Takes sole possession of first place. Post game show next on PR Live. All right, a final score tonight from Pachanga Arena, San Diego. The rush over the Seals by a score of 14 to 8. And uh, Doug, first place belongs to Saskatchewan right now. First place belongs to the rush. They're all alone after an 11 goal second quarter or second half. All right, let's go back to the floor. Here's Tolly Anderson with Ben McIntosh. Thanks, John. Ben, six goals tonight. What was clicking for you? Sorry? What was clicking for you? Oh, I don't know. It's just one of those nights where the ball seems to have eyes, just ends up in the back of the net. In the second half, things changed for the whole team. Yeah. What was said in the locker room at halftime? I just think, I mean, 
we thought we played a decent first half, but we had to we had to get to the middle. I mean, they played some really good defense, and we we made a few adjustments. We were able to get some shots from closer in, and it helped us out. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. All right, let's get to the highlights from this win for Saskatchewan on Stick Up for a Cure Night in San Diego. And it started as a defensive struggle. It ends with the rush going on a run with that big second half, Doug. Yeah, it was a, basically a 3-2 three, three, first half that turned into an 11-6 second half. This was the goal for the rush that gave them the lead into the break and made it 3-2. Knight striking late in the first half, maybe giving the rush some momentum into the second. Yeah, this was really the one that got everything started for the rush on their big run in the second half of the game. And they, they went on a 7 nothing run. In fact, this goal from Ben McIntosh, who had the big night, six goals, made it 8-2 and finished off the run. Yeah, Ben McIntosh just on fire tonight. Six goals, two assists, first star of the game, deservedly so. Continues his domination of the Seals this season. Uh, Seals tried to mount a comeback late. They trailed 13-5 and uh, pulled back into it with this goal here. But again, not enough. Kelly had a good second half, though, for San Diego. You know, I think I think if you're the Seals, you're liking what you're seeing from Connor Kelly as he starts to get adjusted to the pace of the NLL. Seven goals now in his last two games. So the Seals with back-to-back -back goals, but not nearly enough. Saskatchewan would be able to hold him off. Dinsdale had a couple, including this one late, as the rush get out of San Diego and win it again by a score of 14 to 8. So again, the final score, the rush 14, the Seals 8. Let's take a look now at the updated West Division standings. And what this means, Doug, is that the rush are in first place, a half game better than the Seals. The rush will play again tomorrow or later this weekend. Right. The rush play Philadelphia tomorrow, tomorrow. really puts a stranglehold with the uh, tiebreaker over the Seals. They do have an interesting, everybody's got an interesting weekend next weekend. The Seals host Colorado, the Roughnecks and the Rush play, and the Warriors will take on Rochester. A lot of playoff positioning still on the line in the West Division. A big night for Saskatchewan. They win the season series. They're in first place. The final score, the Rush win it by a score of 14. To eight. You can visit NLL.com for an all-access pass to the National Lacrosse League and get the latest news, highlights, stories, and more. For Doug Locker and Tolly Anderson, this is John Schaefer. You've been watching the National Lacrosse League on BR Live.